Mr. Depp, you see the text from Amber that says, I'm at a coffee meeting now. You see that? I do. Right there. So she tells you at, uh, at 12.41 p.m., I'm at a coffee meeting now. We'll be home soon. And then you respond, holy crap, no meetings, no movies. Why? Why do you deviate from our agreement? What species of meeting? It. Just tell me when you get home. Did I read that right? You did, but a coffee meeting. You didn't want her to take the meeting that she was taking that day, correct? Um, it seems as though we had an agreement. Uh, what seems like we had an agreement to do something together. I'm actually asking, asking what species of meeting. So this is not necessarily the angry text. It's just why do you deviate from our agreement? It's not about her doing films. How do you think she got Aquaman, sir? You tell her no meetings, no movies, because you didn't want her acting. You wanted to control her career, correct? Objection compound. That's uh, uh, patently on, untrue, Mr. and it's a Mr. great Depp, guess. Sir. Ms. Hurd had come to me, and she was seriously, seemed to be seriously concerned about how she was being portrayed in in Hollywood. She was she was concerned that because she had done films where there was uh, kind of arbitrary nudity and things of that nature, she had voiced to me that she did not want to be, um, she, she didn't want to be looked upon that way in the industry. She wanted to be able to escape the, the chains of being objectified by the Hollywood system, which is a difficult thing for any woman, certainly, uh, unfortunately. But she asked me, how can I avoid being stereotyped as the, as the beautiful blonde who, who gets her breasts out or goes naked and has to stoop people in, in movies? Uh, and I gave her my um, ad advice on it, on how, on how to avoid it which I thought was pretty accurate. And uh, it, it, she, uh, her ambition was uh, stronger than, than, um, than what she received from my advice uh, is, is, is what it was. My advice that I thought long and hard about because I did care for her and I did understand. I didn't want her to have to do that. And early on in my career, I, I was put in a position where, you know, I could have gone on, I could have been just a guy who was on a TV series for a couple of years. And then, you know, what was gonna be left of me was, uh, would be on lunch boxes and thermoses and uh, posters and teen idol things. And I, I've fought that tooth and nail um, because I didn't, that's not who I was. So I, I, had, had, I had experienced something similar in, in terms of being looked upon as something that you're not. And so I fought against it in the very beginning and um, it, it worked out for me for, you know, for a while there. And uh, I was giving her basically the same advice 